Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 54 of RV Talk Radio. I'm Rob Scribner, your host. Welcome. And yes, this is a very sad day. And I'll tell you more. Stay tuned. Well, you know, when you're a traveler and you're in the RV uh, world, the glorious part of it all is the community and the people you meet. And so when I was before saying it was a sad day, is this is the part of the RVing um, opportunity <laughs> that I don't like, is when you have to say goodbye to good friends. So a couple of our shows, I've referred to this nice couple, they're traveling nurses, and their name is Chad and Valerie. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, you just meet people that are just over the top. And we've met lots of people and we have lots of acquaintances and we appreciate the friendships we have met. But then there's that special one. And 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 that was one of them. And so they had to roll today. They they left today cuz they're traveling nurses and they got new contracts. And the exciting part of it is they're a young couple, they're in their 30s and they're engaged to be married and get they get married actually next weekend in Colorado. Then from uh, after a couple of days with family, they're going to drive up to Michigan, I believe, and uh, uh, start a new contract. And walking out of the RV and looking across and seeing that their rig was gone is heartbreaking. It really is. And I'm going to miss those guys. They were such a great example of of being so spontaneous and fun and very um, <laughs> age differences and things like that. No problem whatsoever. And, and there was a few times that Sherry and I were probably motherly and fatherly a little bit. And of course, we tell them, all right, you have to give us a text message when you get there. And, and then we want pictures at a wedding. And of course, we gave them a, a, a gift for the wedding. Uh, and uh, anyway, so it was a little bit of motherly, fatherly thing there, but truly good friends. Those guys would have done anything for us, and we would have done anything for them. And there was occasions when we were able to trade off uh, helping one another. And so they were just one of those great examples. And, and I still laugh because, you know, all of us say, well, I'm an RV or I'm a traveler. I'm I'm labeled. And, and, and I tell them, and I to this day, I still laugh at the fact he's like, do you realize that you're the ultimate RVers? And they go, what? <laughs> it's like, they don't really know anything about this RVing community. Yet they're the perfect example of being an RVer, of uh, being able to travel, use their RV, fits with their career. They're young and uh, Lord knows where they're going to end up because they, I, I do believe they're planning on having a family. So it'll be interesting to see how they, um, how they approach that. But boy, what what wonderful people! And I, I'm sure that you guys have probably got stories like that. And I hope that you share some of that with our uh, in our comments area, or send us an email and uh, share some of the great experience of the people you've met. And uh, <clears throat> if you're anything like us, like you meet meet. I mean, there's really great people we met, and some still they do keep in contact with us. But then there's that gem <laughs> gem of uh of a friendship that you just like um and life goes on everybody uh you know uh, one thing is a guarantee in life things will change and so uh it's sad but at the same time we're very happy for them and know uh they have a wonderful life ahead of them and of course we made them promise us that they'd text us and send us skype you know and skype us once in a while and and send us wedding pictures and all that stuff and so <laughs> I hope they keep in touch because, uh, and Sherry and I will definitely, you know, that's the other thing is to be a friend or be a, uh, keep a communication going. It takes effort. And so it's going to take some effort on our part. And they seem like the kind of people that would, uh, 
do the effort on their side too. And, and some of this technology is kind of new to them. So uh, it would be interesting to see how long uh, our relationship and uh, friendship lasts and, and, and someday we can cross paths with them again. But anyway, that's the sad part about RVing is saying goodbye. But it's not really goodbye in this you know, with the technology and the things that we have today, uh, connecting with your Facebook, staying connected. Um, it doesn't have to be goodbye. It's just going to be inconvenience way to stay connected. <laughs> I don't know. But, yep, off they went. They're gone. I'm sad. Well, time to talk about more positive things, happier things. Uh, <laughs> Sherry and I are heading to Texas. Yippers. And so when this uh, goes on the air on Monday, we'll still actually be in Texas and be on our way home. And we're uh, going down to Kema, Texas. And I told you a little bit about this before. And we're going to go look at a couple of sailboats. And uh, really some of the things that we're doing is also a great excuse to get out of this hot weather. So Cinder will get to go in the old fancy doggy hotel place we told you about. And uh, we actually leave on a, a Friday morning, uh, fly out of here in Arizona, fly down to Houston, and then we rent a car. And we have a place set up uh, over by the coast. And we'll get, meet up with a broker and just try to, and not only that, we're, uh, we thought we were going to go sailing. We thought, nah, let's just uh, goof off and and uh, take pictures for you guys, show you what we see, and and uh, enjoy uh, the Texas coast uh, as just being able to say, hey, I'm, I'm, my goal is to actually touch the waters of the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Cause, uh, and then I would be kind of, I've been to the Atlantic and touched that, and I've been to the Pacific, of course, and now I get a chance to do that. And I've actually been, the sea of, I've actually been on the Sea of Cortez. So this is my final chance to um, to actually touch all the oceans I believe that touch the United States in a sense well see if Cortez doesn't but anyway you know what I mean <laughs> that encircles us so that's kind of exciting so uh, we hope to have some great uh, stuff for you if you probably notice we haven't been um, doing videos we're kind of stuck in this hot summer thing and, and, and trying to make some decisions here. So we haven't released a video other than the RV Talk Radio ones for um, two weeks now. So I assure you we have a nice video coming out. Uh, the day that you're listening to this show means that in two days, probably by Wednesday or Thursday, um, the video showing, uh, telling you about <laughs> our trip to... Uh, San Diego and up to Marina del Rey is combined with what we're doing this weekend at Texas. And so it'll be a, a little bit longer video than we normally do. Um, we're kind of changing the format of our video a little bit. Uh, we'll have the video tip type things coming out again. Um, uh, right now, it's just like I said, it's been really hot, so we haven't really been doing a lot of video tips. Um, so we're just kind of telling you uh, uh, some of the maneuvers we're doing here as we're kind of uh, redesigning stuff. So that's what's going on, Texas. Anyway, uh, look forward to those videos. I hope you like them. I hope you like kind of the new format and narration that we're doing. And uh, like I said, that should come out on Wednesday or Thursday after this video version of the uh, RV Talk Radio comes out. So hope you enjoy it. Anyway, off we go. Now, I have a rant. <laughs> Not a bunch of a rant, but it's a rant. So I'm down here in Fort McDowell over at uh, Fountain Hills area. And if anybody's ever seen me with my hat off, you realize that I, I seem to be lacking a little bit of hair. So it's not a whole lot of hair, but when I do get a haircut i just need to go in get a number two buzz cut call it you know call it good and so i tend to like good old-fashioned barbers now if you're a, a guy you'll kind of uh, understand what i'm talking about first of all 
finding good old fashioned barbers where you just kick back, everybody's kind of laughing, and and you get the old shave around the ears and the neck thing, and it's just kind of guyish. And uh, and if you walk into the barber shop and there's a few people, you kind of like, how long? He goes, oh, it looks like about twenty minutes. Kick back, and you just sit back and talk with everybody. Well, that's getting really hard to find anymore. So I. <laughs> So I've gotten some other haircuts in some other places. Anyway, so I, today I had to get a haircut before we go to Texas. So I thought, okay, I'm going to run over and get a haircut. So I meet this one guy. It's his barber shop. You walk in there and I go, yep, I need a haircut. Oh, first he looks at me and goes, what do you need? I go, uh, this is a barber shop, right? Uh, I need my car waxed. What do you think? Anyway, so no, I just said, I need a haircut. Is that, this is the right place for it, right? <laughs> the guy goes, Oh yeah, there's one guy in there, and he's already in the there. And there's nobody in the room. He goes, "Well, I could fit you in in uh, twelve o'clock," and it's like fifteen after eleven. I'm going, "Excuse me, <laughs> this is a barber shop, right?" Yeah, well, you have to make an appointment. It's like, "You're kidding me!" It's like, "I tell you what, let's not." So I said, "All right." Apparently, you don't need the business. So I'm going to find myself a, 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 a different barber shop. So I actually went to a different barber shop, walked up. The guy was tickled pink. It was that I actually didn't have anybody in there. And, and uh, Fountain Hills is not a real big place. So it's like, I you don't want to get too picky about how much business you get. But appointments? Anyway, so the guy lost out on, you know, and I tip too. So uh, what's a $17 haircut for me? I give him 20 bucks. So, um I think I'm a good investment <laughs> to spend very little time for buzzing my head and a little bit around the ears and stuff like that. But um, anyway, I just find that why is it so hard to find a, a barber with that you know uh, old fashioned kind of barber shops where you just walk in and um, and uh, I used to get my hair cut up in uh, Seattle at a place that was. It wasn't really a bar, or it was a barbershop, shop, haircut place, but it was owned by a, a Asian group and uh, really nice people, but none of them really speak English very well, so they didn't have that barber shop atmosphere. But they did a great job. The prices were good. I think they were like twelve bucks for a haircut, and uh, they got to know me real well. I didn't even have to really tell them what I needed, other than number two buzz, and. Uh, and I did I use them for years, but I still miss that good old fashioned barber shops. And so, uh, uh, if you have any stories to tell me about barber shops that you go to or or had a chance to do, I'm I'm looking forward to as we travel to find one of those good old fashioned barber shops that um, you can just feel a really cool atmosphere of just how are you today. Everybody's talking out loud to each other, um, and you're getting a good traditional haircut. And uh, maybe those days are gone, and maybe I got to quit. Um, it's just something I won't see anymore. Kind of sad, but anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. My little rant of barbers out there, if you're out there, some of us still love the old-fashioned barber shops. And uh, maybe this day and age, uh, with all the competition, it's kind of hard to do that. But anyway... We do miss it. Well, last week, uh, before I did the show, I told you we're heading for San Diego and then up to uh, Marina Del Rey. And um, if you haven't had the opportunity to go there, uh, San Diego is a beautiful, beautiful city. It's a, And I was amazed. It's got like 1.8 million people living there. Hard to believe, but... I didn't believe it until I went to L.A. area. So on Friday, we drove all the way to San Diego and got there about 1030 at night. And we got a, a whole motel that it seemed like it was going to be a good one. And it was still not that cheap. And it was kind of ratty. But it was okay. And we were able to have Cinder with us. And then in the morning, we got up kind of early and drove all the way up to Marina Del Rey, which is about two and a half hour drive. And to meet a broker and uh that wasn't too bad it, it was a good drive it really wasn't any stop and go um nice clean drive and we got there timely but we noticed on the other side is 
it was traffic. And so I was like, well, I hope it kind of just maybe there's a car accident or something on the way back won't be so bad. So we were, you know, expecting that going home would be back about still around two and a half hours. So we went and looked at a a 45-foot hunter uh, sailboat, a real nice area. Guy was really nice. We enjoyed it. It was a good-looking boat. But anyway, so after we were done with that, we wanted to make sure to go back to San Diego. And then we just kind of go down by the waterside and take Cinder for a walk and enjoy ourselves. And so we hit the freeway on the way back. And oh, my goodness. Man, it was a nightmare. It was the hardest drive I've ever done in a long, long time. And I complain about Seattle traffic, but this was on a Saturday even going towards San Diego on I-5. It's actually a 405 and then an I-5 uh, set up down there. It's called the San Diego Freeway. It was awful. It took us four and a half hours to get back. And, uh, uh, you'll see in our video when we it comes out, uh, we uh, we were so uh, Twitter pated <laughs> by the time we uh, uh, got back to San Diego. We actually went and got some Krispy Kremes, pulled over in a parking lot in the shade, pulled Cinder out because it was ready for her dinner, and she ate her dinner be- uh, on the back of the truck. We sat on the back of the truck uh, truck bed, had some Krispy Kremes and milk, and just kind of chilled out. And we actually did some video right there, and then. Uh, uh, later on, we went uh, when it was it was actually cooler there, so Cinder could actually stay in the truck. So we didn't eat dinner till like uh, nine o'clock, and so uh, it was nice and cool by then. We actually went to uh, Olive Garden, which was okay, and uh, but we, and then we had a nice evening uh, on the uh, coast or well, on uh, San San Diego Bay. Uh, but you know, it was really funny is everybody's walking the San Diego Bay and it's real nice temperatures and, and people either jogging or walking with their fiance or girlfriend or wife. And, uh, uh, and then there's all these people walking around playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> and so, and I really, uh, other than sometimes they don't watch where they're going, they're really not hurting anything. And it's kind of nice to see them out and about. And they, you know, and so I, Sherry and I have been curious about it. We, so we put the Pokemon Go on our cell phone so we kind of understand what the kids are doing and which is not just kids and uh it's kind of neat um but um anyway uh it's i like the idea on the game that it has little markers on there of uh special things to see about the area that you're at so at least the people playing the games will maybe take a moment to kind of look around and realize what's so unique about the park or memorial that they're at or something so but anyway, that was quite a uh, quite a trip, and then of course Sunday we had to drive back, um, and so we uh, we got home probably by dinner time or something like that um, the next day. But uh, we almost did almost nine hundred to a thousand miles in just a weekend, <laughs> and so that was a lot of work. And so for the last four days, we just kind of get back into routine and. What, what, four days later, we're leaving again for Texas, but it should be a little easier this time. It won't be so much driving. So that was our adventure. Uh, watch the video that comes out. I'll show you a little more about our our uh, quest to see that boat in, over there in California, and then uh, we'll have some, hopefully, some really cool stuff from Texas. So that's how the weekend went. Well, are you happy? Really, are you happy? And the reason I'm asking that is I watched uh, or listened to uh, Leo, his name's Leo, on what's called a show called actualize.com or .org. I'm not sure. I think it's .org. Anyway, he does little lectures. Uh, he's a psychologist, uh, well-educated, very good speaker. And he's in the spirituality a little bit and stuff. But uh, So he does di- different sections about different things about our lives and, and hopefully how to improve them. And so his subject last week was, are you happy? Um, how can you live happy? And uh, so he kind of brought up a point that really made me think that we are all famous of saying things like, well, if, if uh, 
if I earn so much money this week, then I can do this and give myself a reward. Or um, uh, as soon as uh, I lose five pounds, then I'll give myself a reward. Uh, things like that where you say, well, as soon as I get that nice car, then I'll be happy. Or as soon as I uh, uh, get an, uh, a certification of something, I'd be happy. And so the funny part is until you get to that goal, are you then unhappy? Are you not going to be happy till you get that goal or meet that uh, quest? Um, so he was talking about if you want to be a happy person, uh, it goes so much deeper than that, that all these temporary, what they call conditional happiness, um, of little things we do to ourselves every day. Um, as soon as I finish this, I'll, I'll be happy. Or as soon as I get a chance to watch my show, I'll be happy. Um, and we do it all the time. We're all guilty of it. And it's conditional happiness. And so I, I it's like, um, I, until you're aware of it and actually start thinking about it, it's like, how often do you do that to yourself? So are you truly happy all the time? Or are you only happy when you meet those conditional things? Um, uh, where unconditional would be you're happy all the time. Uh, even if something bad happens to you, you're happy. Someone dies in your family, you're still going to be a happy person. Uh, you get in a car accident and you're fine and you start healing up all that, you're still happy. I mean, and that's really hard. I mean, that's like, you almost say, well, that's ridiculous. But it's a, uh, are you in a state of mind of, uh, of, it goes much deeper, of, it's more spiritual of the fact of, hey, I'm alive right now, I'm breathing, I can do certain things. And I get another day of this that I'm just happy that I'm a functional organism or, or, or body or, or animal or whatever you want to call yourself in this world that you're living. And you should just be happy with the fulfillment of knowing you have all these opportunities of life. And so that's the more spiritual side of are you happy? So that's the unconditional um, the, the happiness that is always in your heart. And so, yeah, and, and believe me, and he even made it clear too that that's tough. That's truly tough. But at the same time, it doesn't mean you can't try to achieve it or try to learn to be. And I think that we're, you know, we talk about this a lot of times. Are you grateful, happy, thankful for every day? And are you depriving yourself on happiness by putting conditions on it constantly? And so it's actually a really good thing to think about is are you constantly giving yourself conditions of whether you can be happy or not? And, and uh, we get that all the time. It's like, uh, especially like um, our condition where we're kind of stuck right here right now. It's like, uh, I'm not going to be happy until we can travel again. Well, then that means that I've got to, I'm going to hold that unhappiness until I hit that target uh, or, um, uh, I'm not going to be happy till I get this show done today. Um, then I'll be happy. Well, I, I need to be happy all the time. So, and, I, and maybe as you get older, you might realize that the spiritual side of being happy is a little easier because you start realizing your, your immortality is, you know, uh, not there anymore. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, you can see that at age that it's, you're uh, not going to be around forever. So every day you wake up, you got to start saying to yourself, thank you. <laughs> Get one more day of this. Yay. <laughs> so that's something to be happy about. So that's a great way to start your day. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. It's a great subject. I'd love to hear your comments about um, spirituality type thing. I'm not talking about religion. It's more of a mindset. Uh, are you happy? Can you be happy? What's it take for you to be happy? Have you found ways to, uh, or, or sayings that you say to yourself about being happy, which probably uh, add in grateful and thankful and those kind of things that 
make your life a little better. Maybe that's just bringing this up on a radio show and make you think about, am I happy or do I have conditions that I put on myself all the time in order to be happy? And does that make me unhappy if I don't meet those conditions all the time? So is that a healthy thing to do to yourself? I don't know. So anyway, I'd love to hear your uh, your thoughts and uh, ideas on that. So the big question is, are you happy? Well, I was watching a video the other day uh, of RV Love, and they were talking, uh, they're actually doing a video of where their GPS was taking them going to Wyoming, I believe. And, and Sherry and I have had the same problem where your GPS um, supposedly is supposed to take you on the fastest route, but you have to be very careful of that sometimes. And it can put you on roads that maybe for a car or a truck wouldn't have been all right, but for a motorhome or a trailer or uh, could put you on a dirt road or something you don't really want. So what Sherry and I do is we have a regular Magellan um, uh, system that we got from Camping World uh, that has the built-in uh, Good Sam's uh, directory in it. And at the same time, Sherry runs Google Maps uh, simultaneously when we're traveling. And when we know we're getting into critical areas, so certainly have both systems on. And occasionally, one will say something and the other will say another thing. And then we'll literally pull over and analyze what the two are trying to tell us and then try to make the best decision. So I certainly understand how uh, people can get really frustrated with their GPSs sometimes. And so um, it's just a computer trying to use some analytics in a way. Uh, to really you know, get you to the destination. And so it's limited to what algorithms or whatever uh, program you have installed in it. So I would recommend that if you're doing some long-term traveling from one point to another, to simultaneously run two types of GPSs, whether it's one's on your cell phone and the other one's uh, like a, a Magellan like, like we use, uh, luckily, most of the time, our uh, two systems agree, but it does happen where they disagree, and both routes were probably okay to go to. It really just comes down to making the decision if you want to stay on highways or freeways as opposed to back roads. Or uh, uh, sometimes, like in Phoenix, he'll try to send us to a destination using uh, side roads, which are not bad here. But they'll have a lot of lights as opposed to being on the freeway. And then uh, the other thing is if you look at the time, typically they'll say this is the fastest way to go this particular direction or, or destiny. And uh, one will be higher than the other. And, and if you really analyze it, you can probably figure out why and then make your choice. And then whatever one you pick, the two GPSs will, um, one will correct its its route to the, probably the same route that your other one was recommending it you decided to follow. I know. Anyway, uh, GPSs. Uh, <laughs> I think we all have the same frustration, but I would recommend simultaneously running a second one, especially if you're getting into bigger cities and places that you're just not familiar with. To have two opinions is always a good idea. getting down to uh, I have to kind of wrap it up early this week we uh, actually are rolling to go to Texas uh, tomorrow morning and uh, I'm behind schedule something fierce so uh, I haven't had a chance to get all the materials I wanted for the show so I have to go with a half hour show today and I apologize uh, big thing I wanted to pass along is we talked about a lot of things about sadness and we talked about happiness a lot in this show and uh, uh you know, RVing uh, <laughs> can bring both of those subjects together about how how sad it can be when you 
well, the happy part is always meeting people and it's always cool to meet new people but the sad part is always uh, having to say goodbye so we've kind of gotten to a, a policy of not really saying goodbye as to how we can meet up again in the future so anyway uh, hope that doesn't bum me out but at the same time uh, I'm sad today that we lost uh, some friends that we can't physically see anymore but already they've been texting to us about how their trip's going so it's pretty cool so uh, me and Sherry want to take the time to thank you very much for listening. Please take the time to contact us. Send us your messages. Please apply. There's a lot of things in this particular show we want to uh, hear your opinion about. Uh, happiness and sadness and things you do and uh, GPS as we uh, uh, covered a lot in just a short time. And uh, we'll be in Texas for a little bit. We'll try to get you some good photos. We really uh, urge you to watch our next video that comes up uh, uh, this Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how fast we get it edited. And uh, we appreciate it. And please take the time to subscribe to our videos, subscribe to our podcast. We really appreciate it. Please take the time if you're, uh, uh, you know, we have some big projects going on and uh, don't have them all defined yet, but it will be soon that we could uh, definitely use some uh, patrons and we'll. Uh, do our best to uh, make our super videos and content and podcasts and radios uh, shows that uh, really uh, you're thrilled about and so are we so thank you once again uh, for your support thank you for being a future patron and we ask everybody that's out there please be safe please be happy and maybe I'm hoping that you can share the sadness of meeting good friends and moving on, but realizing that those friends will be with you for a lifetime. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day. Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.